Today I want to address an issue that rarely gets talked about and it's the fact that most of us are insecure about our finances. And I think this insecurity mainly comes from comparison. Whether it's comparing one job to another, one profession to another, one salary to another. It's doing stuff like comparing houses, apartments, cars, lifestyles. And a lot of this comparison is thanks to Instagram. It's very easy to get on Instagram and make everyone think that you're living a luxurious lifestyle, despite how much money you're making. And if not through Instagram, just through life in general, when you have conversations, when people talk about where they went on their vacation, where they went on their honeymoon, what they're doing this summer, what car they wanna buy next, or the next house they wanna buy. And when we fall into this comparison trap, the insecurity just cuts deeper and deeper. So why are most of us insecure about our finances? I'll tell you why. In my opinion, most people feel insecure about their finances because they straight up feel like they don't make enough money, especially when they compare themselves to others. And it happens in so many ways, and I'm gonna give you some examples. This video is about to be hype. Think about stuff like when you go to a family function, whether it's a family reunion or whatever the case is, the whole family is getting together, right? And then you have a casual conversation over dinner or over breakfast or whatever meal it is. And the question comes, you know, hey, what are you up to? What are you, what are you doing? How's work? And then you tell them, let's say you're an accountant. Okay, that, that's, that's all right, you know, that's all right. See, yeah, my daughter's in medical school, you know, to be a orthopedic surgeon. She's about to come out there making 600 grand a year. And this happens. I'm not exaggerating. This, is, this straight up happens. It's like it turns into somewhat of a contest. Literally, it turns into a literal pissing contest of who's doing the best, who's making the most money, who's more successful, who just got on a roll. These things lead to comparison traps at an early age. It's almost as if, and I'm not saying all families do this, but this happens all the freaking time in family reunions. There's, there's going to at least be one person that does this. They're going to ask you what it is that you do, almost as if to compete with you next. Oh, you're doing that? that? That's great, man. You just got your master's? Cool. I just got my doctorate. It's stuff like that, I'm telling you. Or if they didn't do it, their daughter or their son or their cousin or somebody did it. Somebody has to outdo you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's real good. My son's in law school, you know? And, and I've always walked out of those events feeling like, who gives? Like, I don't care. Good for you. Like, when I go to family events, I just care that everybody's doing good. Everybody's happy. Everybody loves each other. That's, that's what I care about. I could care less what your title is, what your profession is. Are you happy? Are you good in life? Are you doing well? Are you safe? Are you staying out of trouble? That, that's what I care about. And the thing is, the reason that this can fall into some traps, professions don't necessarily have salaries attached to them. Because on the other side, what you don't see, if someone is in law school, you don't see how much debt they're in. You don't see the first few years after they get out of law school how little they get paid until they get their full salary. Same thing for doctors. You don't see that risk to reward ratio. You don't see that trade-off. There's so much you don't see. You don't see the half a million dollars of debt. All you think of is, oh, they must make so much money. Go look up how much doctors make once they hit the residency. Go look up how much recent law grads make right out of law school. Go look it up. They don't come out of school hitting those crazy salaries like that, at least not usually. And that's nothing against them. Like if you have a law degree, medical degree, something like that, and if you want to shoot really high, shoot high. If you want to be an astronaut, go for it. But I'm just saying this is what leads to comparison. This is what leads people feeling inadequate, feeling like they, they don't make enough money. Here's another example, the dating market. Some men and women have certain standards. You have to be making a certain amount of money. Some, some people would say, hey, if you're not making at least $120,000 a year, you're not in my league. We can't even talk. Can't even have a conversation. Don't even look at me. And it's not just the women. Some men are like that too. Some are like, hey, if you don't have a degree, don't talk to me. If you're not at the top of the top, if you're not a VP, if you're not a senior manager, if you're not the head of cardiology, like, I mean, some, some of these things get ridiculous and it does make you feel inadequate. And so many people scream six figures to the top of their lungs as if it's some predetermined prerequisite. But the real deal is, how many of these folks even know how to deal with their money? How many of these high earning individuals are making drastic financial mistakes to the point where they have little to nothing to show for the fact that they're high earning individuals? Exactly. Because one thing we don't do is run around screaming how much we make, right? Because it ain't nobody's business. I think it's fine to talk about money, but you don't want to tell the wrong person how much you make. That's a fact. And since you're not running around telling people, like you might have a title, your title might be supervisor. 
It could be at one of the biggest companies in the world, but your title could be supervisor, right? And your uncle over here, his title could be sales manager. But check this out. The supervisor, especially if they're in a manufacturing environment, can make a lot more than the sales manager. Neither one of them are shouting out how much they make. But let's say the supervisor is making $85,000 and the manager is making $70,000 because the title literally has no weight on the actual salary itself. You have to think about the industry. But when some family members, when some friends hear, oh, manager, you, oh, you're making them big bucks. And then you go home feeling inadequate, like, I don't, I don't feel like I make enough money. Uncle over here is making six figures. I'm only making 80K. You can't be like that. You can't compare yourself to other people for one. And you definitely can't compare yourself to imaginary numbers that you don't even have all the facts on. You're just guessing at this point. You're just looking at the titles and gauging how much they make based off the title. You're just gauging how much you should be making based off of somebody else's expectation. And to be real, people who have these types of expectations of you, you have to make this much before we even start talking, before we can even date. You have to make this much before you can be considered successful in the family. Those people, people like that, they have shallow expectations because they're looking at material things. So those aren't even the people to be around anyway. Oh, I'm gonna let y'all know today. If y'all hear this loud sound in the background, my neighbors are just watching Stranger Things and they have it up really, really loud. Anyway, another reason you may feel insecure about your finances is because your past financial decisions are subconsciously affecting you. And this gets pretty deep. It's when you might know in the back of your head that your bank account is getting low for the month but you still need to go grocery shopping and you still have a car payment due and you feel like your savings aren't quite where they should be and you still feel like you have a lot of debt and you feel like it's never gonna get paid off. Like these are what I'm talking about. These are the past financial decisions and that debt could be something as simple as student loans. And you could be at the point of your life where you feel like, man, I went to school for four or five years and now I'm out in my profession and I have not used a bit of my degree. Not a single class that I've taken has had anything to do with my actual work in my profession. And I'm underpaid. And you might feel like that whole degree was a waste because you spent all that time just to get to where you are and you're still not even happy. And you're still not making the money you want to be making. And you're not even doing the things that you want to be doing within your profession. And that's real. And I've definitely been there. Recently I've been there. You know what I mean? But if you are watching this video and you're feeling that way, and it doesn't necessarily have to be school, it could be anything that you spent money on that you thought would better your future, that puts you in debt, and now you, you got less than desired results. But I would say if you feel that way, it wasn't a waste because either way you did learn something. You did learn that, okay, this wasn't the path for me. You did learn that, oh, well, this field actually doesn't have the money in it that I thought it would, or this field isn't what I thought it was going to be. And a lot of people feel that way, and that's fine. From there, you move on and you keep it You keep it moving. There's no need to feel sorry for yourself or feel insecure about it. Yes, it's going to take a while to get out of debt, but just create a strategy, create a plan, use the avalanche method, and you'll be out of debt in no time. And on the other hand, it could be stuff like leisure, stuff that you spent money on for your leisure that really just puts you in, in to more trouble than it was worth. You might have recently bought an entertainment system that costed $2,000 for your living room so you could have an at-home theater. The reason I bring that example up is because I have a little one in here. It didn't cost $2,000, but home theaters are awesome, so who wouldn't want to get one of those? Or you could have bought all your furniture at once and bit off a little more than you could chew because you wanted to have that comfort, you wanted to have that aesthetic within your home, which is understandable, but at the same time, you're kind of regretting it now. You're like, man, I shouldn't have did that. Or it could have been something like an expensive car, or you could have been splurging in the mall like most of us do jewelry, clothes, shoes, you name it. Someone watching this video has done it. And we all have our vices and it's no judgment. It could have even been something like food. Using your credit card too much on food, next thing you know, you only swiped it a few times, but you look at it at the end of the month and now you owe like $500. Like that stuff adds up pretty quick. And the reason I bring all this up together is because as you move on throughout your daily motions, right? Going through the motion, you're going about your day. As you swipe cards, whether it's a credit card or debit card, as you make certain financial decisions, what you mentally register to yourself is this behavior is okay. Even though you may know in your mind that I shouldn't be doing this right now, man, I told myself I wasn't going to stop by McDonald's on the way back, or I told myself I wasn't going to buy this shirt, and then you do it anyway, you're, you're telling yourself, hey, it's actually okay that I do this. Hey, we'll, we'll be all right. We're not hurting right now. We're not, we're not in poverty. We're not poor. We're good. We'll pay this money back over the next three months. We're good. Tell yourself you weren't going to buy that flat screen TV. You buy it because it was 20% off but you still don't have the money to afford it, so you still swipe that credit card. I'm telling you that this happens every day. 
But what you're doing is you're reassuring yourself, you're enabling yourself and empowering yourself to make these decisions. And they weigh on you mentally on a subconscious level. It's all the way in the back of your mind. And when you lay down at night and you have trouble going to sleep, I can guarantee you a good portion of that stress is because of financial decisions that have had a subconscious impact on you. And a lot of it is just really rash decisions, make, making things happen too fast. You might have been sick of living with your parents or living with your brother or living with roommates. And so you say, you know what? I'm moving out on my own. Before you were ready, that can also weigh on your conscience. Like Things like that can happen, and it makes you insecure financially. Have you ever gotten to the point where you were like, man, I'm not even going to look at my bank account right now. I know that thing's negative. Or, man, I probably got like $2 in my bank account. People say this in a jokingly way, but they know it to be true. Or at least close to being true. You know what I'm saying? And again, we've all been there. I was definitely there, especially when I was in college. I was definitely there, but that's the reality we have to face. And once we accept this reality, we can then change it. We have to understand what our limits are, what our challenges are before we can actually go beyond them. I think Einstein said that. Anyway, here's another rant I want to go on real, real quick. I already touched on it a little bit before, but I got to touch on it again. You know what I'm saying? This is one of my favorite video topics. This is one of my favorite videos I've made in a long time. But um, anyway, another thing that will keep you insecure about your finances is doing a lot of work for the money that you do have. And not feeling like it's enough. And I'm talking 50, 60 hours a week. And still not feeling like you're making enough. And then having very little to show for it at the end of the day. Because you might have so much overhead or so many different financial obligations. Or you just might have made bad financial choices. You might live in a high cost of living type of area with a relatively low paying job that offers overtime. But that overtime still gets taxed a lot. So you don't really get to enjoy that much. The money. Look, I, I know how this works. I've seen this so many times, it's ridiculous. Or you feel like you're just busting your tail at work and trying to show that you're an exceptional employee, trying to show that you're worthy of a promotion or just more money in general, and you feel like you're not seeing a return on your investment. That's disheartening to anybody. Like, There's nothing that's going to discourage you faster than the pressure behind making money doing something. Like if, I, like, if I launch this YouTube channel purely with the expectation of making a living off of it, I would burn myself out because then I'm putting pressure on myself to make a substantial type of income doing YouTube. And it can happen, but it's not something that's going to happen once you blink and you know you snap your finger. I don't know why I snapped my finger when I said blink, but you get what I'm saying. And the same thing goes for work. Like you're already making a living from work, right? But you might feel like you want to make more. And I'm not talking about like 10 grand more. I'm talking 20, 30, 40, 50 or more than that. And putting that pressure behind yourself and then also feeling the pressure behind your bills and your financial obligations and maybe even some of your financial mistakes. And you might have other people depending on you, like say your kids or other family members, that pressure is going to get to you and it's going to make you feel insecure. And when stuff like Christmas time rolls around, and you see other families splurging, you know what I'm saying? You don't know how they got the gifts, mind you. You don't know how they got the gifts. That's why I always say, don't compare yourself to someone else. And don't try to guess how much to make it just based off of what you see. Just because people have things does not mean they have money. Let me repeat that. Just because they have things does not mean they have money. In fact, the more things you own, the more things own you. I'll get to that in a second. Right now, we're going to go on this Christmas topic. So then during Christmas time, you see all these other families splurging on their kids, splurging on you know their spouses and other things like that. And they have these expensive gifts. I'm talking TVs, Xboxes, Playstations, designer clothes, designer shoes. I mean, you name it, they got it. And then you might feel like you can't provide that same type of luxury to your family. And that's going to put insecurity on you as well. But the thing I want to close out with is you never know what someone else is going through. You never know what someone else's finances look like. Just because they have a bigger house, more Christmas presents, a bigger family, a nicer car, a cooler job title, does not mean anything. You have no idea what they're going through. You have no idea what conversations take place behind closed doors. You don't know how they sleep at night. You don't know if they're worried about their finances. You don't know how much debt they're in. You don't know. So you have to get away from comparing yourself to other people because that is what where the insecurity stems from. But just understand, no matter what is going on, no matter how much work you're putting in right now, you can always improve your situation. I've made several videos about how you can improve your situation, including my last video. 
to anyone living paycheck to paycheck. I highly recommend you watch that video. But there's also several other videos that I show you how to make more money, how to get out of debt, all of that stuff. That's what this channel is all about, helping you and your personal finances. Uh, I tell you what stocks are good ideas to invest in, which ones can grow really quickly. I mean, just browse this channel. There's hundred, there's a hundred and something videos up here. I mean, go wild with it because not one video is going to give you all the answers. You got to watch a bunch of them. But I hope this helped you if you do feel insecure about your money and you have some steps on how to improve it, how to move forward. Or maybe at least you just have answers on why you feel the way you feel because you might not have realized it. I hope this video was helpful. If you like it, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below on what impacted you the most about this video. And I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.